All right, the final deck we're playing today is a Frozen Fungus, Frozen Mushrooms, a uh, Teemo Sedge Mushroom deck, whatever you want to call it. It goes by many names. Uh, this deck has been in the format for a little while now. Um, I've been playing this game since about August of last year. So not since the beginning, but I think basically ever since that time, this has been at least somewhat present in the format. And then in the one of the more recent sets, it got some neat upgrades um, that has seen it become, I think, a little bit more viable. So I have Ballistic Bots uh, are probably the biggest upgrade that this deck got. So Ballistic Bot says round start creating ignition in hand ignitions are a fleeting created card that deals one damage to the enemy nexus so this does a few things this creates a spell that we can use um every turn to help fuel our starlet seers and our uh puff cap peddlers starlet seers granting the top unit of the deck plus one plus one whenever we play a spell puff, puff cap peddlers putting mushrooms in our deck which is probably the biggest uh you know this is one of our key cards in this game since it is a mushrooms focused deck uh, the other thing it lets us do is it ensures that we have something that can deal damage to the enemy nexus every round, which helps us, uh, you know, turbo level Sejuani here. Um, Sejuani needs us to damage the enemy nexus in five different rounds to level up, and once she does, the first time the enemy nexus is damaged every round, she frostbites the entire enemy board. So very uh, great way of controlling the board. Makes it very... Once she comes down and she's leveled, it makes it very hard for the opponent to race us um you know even if they have units that can chump block our stuff all the while they're drawing cards with with poison puff caps on them and slowly dying to them so uh yeah so ballistic bot very good card in this deck um what else do we we have that's worth noting aftershocks now to help us deal with uh both to deal with landmarks then also can be a form of reach when we need it to be uh, not notably, I mean, this can trigger Sejuani's uh, um, effect if she's leveled and on the field and we have no other way to do that. Some Harsh Winds in here to help us, uh, you know, stay alive against big units. This is this counters things like Feel the Rush or just other big scary threats that we need to, uh, you know, kind of turn off for a turn while we uh, hopefully by that point in the game we're getting close to burning them out with Mushrooms. Hexcore Foundry one of the newest additions to this deck round start all players draw one so it's symmetrical but of course you know if one of those players i.e our opponent is slowly dying from the cards they draw then uh you know that's to our benefit so this is a this is an archetype i haven't played uh before you know when i started playing the game obviously it's not something i could uh, build right away but slowly over time my collection has grown and i actually noticed the other day i saw someone uh, playing this list and i thought you know what I think I'm only one card off from playing this, and uh, yeah, I was missing a single Sedge, so I just decided, you know what, let's craft it, let's play it finally and give it a try. Um, yeah, see how we do. I think I like these two. I think I've tossed these looking for other things like Teemo. Eh, maybe we don't need the Innkeeper right away. Innkeeper is nice for keeping our life total high against aggro, obviously. And sometimes we can use it to heal our units. Um, when we need to. But I think it's worth cutting everything else there, hoping to find a turn one Teemo, which we did not, of course. Clearly I'm not... a a professional. Okay, if they go to Thermo Beam this, we have protection for it in hand with the Elixir of Iron, so that feels nice. Uh, we also have a Troll Chant after words as well, which feels good. Did they just discard a Pharon off of that? How do I turn on my mobile Lytix thing again? I actually forget the, the command. It's Control Z. What did they get rid of? Yeah, they did get rid of a Pharon. Anyway. We have a troll chant to protect it further, which is nice. It's a peddler, though. 
We'll attack first and see what they do. If they tap out for like a Draven, then we can play Puff Cat Peddler. And now we get extra value off of our troll chance whenever we play a spell. So our deck starting to do its thing. That's not bad either. Those mushrooms get a lot of triggers, which is nice. And uh, obviously plants mushrooms in their deck, which is uh, the whole point. It's what we're trying to achieve. Mystic shot. Yeah, we're gonna try to save that. I think it's important. This would be a good winter. We could have a second one, which is fine. Okay, they're look they're looking to push damage this turn. No blocks. No, thank you. It's a mystic shot ourself. That's kind of nice. I'll play this first, actually. And I probably just pass. I mean, like, we could mystic shot one of their things, but... I don't think that's worth doing necessarily. I think we kind of want to just pass. If they go to kill one of these, we can double Mushroom Cloud in response to get some value off of them before they go. Looks like our opponent had a little bit of an awkward hand. It happens sometimes. I play this archetype quite a bit. So yeah, oftentimes you, you are something away your rummages because uh, you don't have much else to do. I don't think we're ready to play the Foundry quite yet. I want to save Sedge for next turn. Um, Fly away while you can. I'm a peddler, not a meddler. Let's block here. Hmm. Okay. That feels kind of nice. I wonder if I'm supposed to like mystic shot their face just so I could share in spoils. Blessed by snow and stars. This would be a good winter. Maybe I'm supposed to Mystic Shot this. Now if they play another unit that I'd rather Sedge, I'm gonna feel bad. Bow to no one. And matter of fact, maybe I'm just supposed to save this. Dealing four, it's not a whole lot. Four for conquest. Sure. Um probably thermo beaming this, because it's perfect. Although I kinda wanna share it spoil since we did hit a um since we did hit a mushroom. what they do post combat I'm so good I surprise myself I thought you'd never ask that in mind we'll go ahead and do this then no way ah oh, an auspicious season
Am I supposed to harsh winds? I feel like I don't need this Starlet Seer so much anymore. This would be a good winter. Do I want to play this Hexcore Foundry? Probably not quite yet. Well, we finally found our one of our units. It's Draven time. Beam to finish this off. Let's take this outside. Okay, double harsh winds is nice. I think we're playing the foundry now. Dead to Mystic Shot and their deck. I don't even think these regions have access the to healing. Big place. Let's see all of it. Oh, there was a little fella asking for me. Watch and learn. Hey, Time Twist, how's it going? Welcome. Pretty good first showing for that for that deck. Um, yeah, kind of uh, showed off what we were talking about at the start of the set was that Hexcore Foundry, you know, our mushrooms kind of break the symmetry of that card. Both players are drawing, but we're the ones, their cards are killing them, so. Thanks a lot for the follow. I appreciate uh, the follow and you stopping by. 
I think I want the Aftershock. Do I want both Teemos? Their deck definitely runs Thermal Beam, so we could play the first Teemo, it gets Thermal Beamed, and then we could play the second Teemo, it could get Mystic Shot, but at least we have to make them have two answers. I guess the first one could just get Mystic Shot in, into combat, which is probably something our opponent would, would more likely do, but I think I like double Teemo, especially with the Chump Flop. Do I like Aftershock or do I want to get rid of it? It kind of kills a lot of stuff. I don't know. It kills their Dravens, it kills their Ezreals, like early Ezreals. I think I'm going to keep it. Another day in the field. There's a Peddler, so our first uh, couple draws here very nice. Pretty much exactly what we want to see. Witness perfection, meatbags. Play a uh, holistic bot of our own. It's fine, we have a backup for that one. Safety disengage. I have the best job. What do we think is better? It's probably the ignition. Because I could play the Teemo. We can tack on some extra damage on this thing. Oh, right, that's a created card. Alright, that's fine. What the b is that? We learned something new. Or I was reminded of something I guess I should have known. Um so we could chump wump play one puff cap. And then that hit Teemo hitting will level him, but that's not good enough, I don't think. Can you improve perfection? Fire did nothing moves. I think I might want to just kill the Draven here. bad if they have a second one, but we have things like Mystic Shots to deal with this, so I think I'd rather do go that route. If they open attacks here, we'll just take it. Sedge is all very close to leveling already. Feels great. They could deal a lot of damage this round. Am I? What am I supposed to do here? Do I have? Do I have to take out their stuff? Oh, if mushrooms could talk. I'll have what he's having. Me. I'll take this guy out. They grow up so fast. My pretty. Hmm. 
Darn, we didn't make them draw a puff cap. They could have a thermo beam for this sedge, which would feel bad. Um, what are we up to then? I, I think you're gonna have to state that again. I think I need to place a sedge here. He could thermal beam us. We have a backup sedge. Um, if he thermal beams us, or does that? Maybe it means this Themo's getting a hit in. Oop, did they find a mystic shot? They did. That's sad. We are not very I probably just shouldn't have played the Puff Cat Peddler that one turn and should have gone with Chump Wump, loaded their deck up with a ton of mushrooms. Excuses for war. And see where we go from there. Warm hearts and hot soup. That's what I would be thinking. Let's do this. This thing is ephemeral. Plus three, plus four. Um, leave no survivors. I mismanaged my resources this game. I think there was definitely there was a turn where I was supposed to play this guy out instead of the puff cap peddler and just load his deck up with mushrooms. I think we'd be in a much much better spot at, at this point. I don't think we have time to, to find a way to deal with Leviathan Swain. So we would have taken more damage that turn. Actually, would we have? No, because I could have blocked his thingy with what I ended up. Yeah, no, that was that was definitely where I misplayed there. Instead of playing what I, yeah. Anyway, I have to go back to look at the, the exact situation we were in. They had. I also made. I also made that mistake of blocking their uh, their thingy early on as well. So. I think this hand is fine to keep because I forgot about spinning axe being a created card actually giving the thing plus two attack so that was my whoopsie <laughs> if I if I yeah if I don't take that block the game is very different as well that game plays out way differently does it play out in such a way where we win unsure but we're in a better spot for sure
I'm just gonna pass. No, I should have attacked. I, for some reason, I'm now like talking in chat, and so like I'm forgetting that it was my turn to attack. The fate of mortals and spirits falls to me. It must be done. Oh God. I try to pop this plus save my peddler. There they go. We still have Troll Chant up if they have some shenanigans. Probably worth doing. This will be quick. Even though they're both going to trade off. Blessed by snow and stars. Protect House Law. I'm gonna pass first and see what they do. If they go to Barrier the Shen, we can try to pop it with the Mystic Shot, which is My nice. Father's blade. Feels like we're in a pretty good spot here. of a beating, but it is what it is.
Hunter. for me. They probably have single combat, don't they? And if they do... Attack. I guess we'll see. If they do, they're gonna use it here. for literally everything we were doing. The eye of twilight sees all. Yeah. I think we can go ahead and back it up. Bright steel formation is basically impossible for us to kill. We needed in addition to our really good start, we needed a Teemo to go off. If we had a Teemo going off, that would have changed everything. We probably would have burned them out before they could turn the corner like they did and kill us. Teemo in opener seems fine. I don't know about these mystic shots. No, I think we find something else. Shock to deal with their plaza. Which is nice. I'm just gonna pass. I'll follow where I can. No blocks, obviously. Another aftershock. Feels nice. Let's mess some folks up. Have a mushroom. Have three. I've heard about you. I suppose. So, how important is it to have troll chant up for when we attack with Teemo? Uh, cause I could troll chant this, this goes up to five, he hits, and it's the three, four, then they don't get in for another hit. It's probably fine. Or am I just supposed to use my life total as a bit of a resource here? I think I'm just gonna take these hits, honestly. gonna get hit by a uh, single combat we can still save Timo though so bad.
Jwani's already leveled, which feels really good. And we have a second one. Time to get rowdy. The winter's claw endures. Bow to no one. I'm supposed to do this differently. Played these last couple turns a little poorly, but I think we're so far ahead at this point it just doesn't matter. Got to show off, kind of see how that deck does its thing. Start off with an early Teemo, fill their deck full of mushrooms, all the while defending him from removal with our things like troll chants and, and elixirs. And then we get a uh, leveled up Sejuani and they uh, their board just basically doesn't do anything anymore. Riven Vi, this is a deck we played on stream one time before. I think Troll Chance is something we're always pretty much interested in. I think Ballistic Bot also. I also like trying to find a turn one Teemo. We have plenty of ways to find things that can keep our stuff alive, so I think throwing that back. Okay. So I think we're gonna go Ballistic Bot into Starlit Seer, play Ignition. Let's see how that works out for us. Idols, thanks a lot for the uh, follow. Appreciate you stopping by the stream and uh, checking out what we're doing here today. Destiny awaits. Okay. This ignition will be a uh, second trigger for Sedge. I was born in battle and raised by war. Who goes there? I think we'll play this. The cost of war. I, I I'm I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not the best uh, Legends of Rune Terror player out there for sure, but uh, you know we we like to have fun on this stream. We play a variety of decks, and uh, so that's kind of the big thing we're we're about here. We try to just play a, a solid variety of things, try new things, learn new things, have fun, and. Uh, just so you're aware, if you wanted to check out any of uh, the decks that I've uh, played previously on the stream, you can check out the YouTube channel that I have. My 
The link to that is just below the stream. And um, you can check out exactly what decks you might be interested in building. Because uh, I break down all my streams like via deck type there. So give it a try if you're interested in seeing, you know, potentially what you might be interested in building in lore. But it's definitely a good game to get into. It's very free to play friendly. You build up a collection very, very quickly. So yeah, definitely an awesome game to get into. I, I highly recommend it. Of course. I think we're just going to end the round. Opponent's not doing anything with their mana. I think we're okay with that. Yeah, and I try to like indicate in the in the stream title what kind of deck it is. So if you're if you're if you're a card game player and you know what you know a control deck is versus more mid range, etc., it's broken up. Uh, it's broken up by those sort of archetypes or sub subtypes. So join me if you want to live. I tried being great. I tried being. So let's see what they got going on here. If sh if she generated a quick attack thing for them, that could be nasty. Um. This would be a good winter. I think we'll start with this. He's never going to be a good attacker. We don't need him to have a ton of health. We just need him to live this combat. I'd like to trade off. Uh, one of their champions here if we can. So spending one card to make both of their attacks bad feels really good. And we still have um, stuff left over. Uh, if it means stopping... That's kind of neat. Rising Spell Force with Vi. Um, so even double Elixir of Iron actually doesn't save this, so it's not worth playing. Um, I could do it just for the triggers, but I think that's a little loose, so I'll just let this happen. And what are we doing now? Guess we're playing this. To start. Uh, we have a lot. Our hand is okay if we were to have like a Teemo or something. Or Sedge. No such luck so far, and I don't know that I want to play Hexcore Foundry just yet. Because I don't think I want both of us to be drawing cards. What could we do? They have plenty of ways to deal with our stuff. Like, I could Mystic Shot, do stuff like that. Maybe we'll start with this and see what they do. Maybe this. Maybe we, we attack in with our things that can trade with Vi. Break the ties that bind. You have to be cautious of Rising Spell Force as a 3 mana plus 4, so they could definitely... Uh, level her up this round. Okay. Probably gonna force them to make a couple of trades here. Uh, Cause we are swinging for a very lethal amount of damage. We'll I think it's worth saving this. Cause they're down to seven. This puts them at six. That's a very good draw. Because if they have like a, a buy ready to level up in hand. Really, they're going for that and not this. That seems questionable. I'll play this as a blocker for that 4-4. Four, four. Might even be right to use this tavern, this innkeeper, to heal this. It still dies to both of their things, though, so that's probably not correct. Take 
All of their attacks are bad. So now they're at a virtual five when we get another ignition. Oh, that's a pretty good draw. We might actually just be able to kill them with mushrooms. Just regular old mushrooms in their deck here. I think I want to open attacks rather than play this first. Them, them not blocking here is, uh, yeah. This is probably the game. We were already in a really good spot. They kind of went for this, this play, and, uh, yeah. I don't think their deck has healing, ever. So they're just dead to this ignition. And if they weren't dead to this ignition, they were probably dead to all the mushrooms we were going to plant in their deck. I think Ballistic Bot's fine. I think we want to discard everything else, though. This is a matchup where we want to get the mushrooms going sooner a mushroom. rather a than the Starlet Seer. So we're going to play him out. Play the ignition. Oh, that's a huge mistake from our opponent. That can't be right at all. They basically, they would have gained three by killing that anyway without it connecting. So they should have killed that in response to the ignition so I wouldn't get value off of it. They have three puff caps in their deck that they that didn't need to be there. Leave your bags at the door. Who goes there? Now I think we play this. Let's take this outside. Don't care. Because now, because if we make like every card, every unit in our deck a must answer threat from the Starlets here, that's very good for us. Um, do we want to play the aftershock on this? Maybe. Hold up troll chain, but then we can't play ignition as well. I'd like to connect with that if possible. I think this is worth trying. They don't have landmarks, so this is not hitting a landmark. It's dealing three damage, but I don't know. There's a chance we could get more. This might be a this might be a misuse of this. They could have like a Winter. lot of things to block here. We could have sentries, I suppose. Sentry. Sentry means we could go ignition thermo beam. 
to attack in. This smells like they have another uh, drain, but okay, that's very good for us. So Sedge is going to be at four to five by the end of this turn, most likely. A storm approaches. I'm fine with that. System upgrade. Hey, take it to the gun show. Still haven't found the unit. They're just passing, huh? Warm hearts and hot soup. For my homeland. Beautiful. Blessed by snow and stars. We'll thermo beam the egg. Strike them down. And then we have really good open attacks. Saving. Flesh was weak, but look at me now. He wiped our board with a card called Avalanche. It deals two to all units. There we go, a little late. Return to us. Three three mana ten ten, pretty good. Kinda come down a little late though. There's no point in blocking this because when it dies, it gets an egg, and on the during their round start, they're going to be enlightened, which means have 10 mana crystals, so they'll just get her back. Um, so there's no point in blocking here. We'll just skip. Rend the skies. Can you improve perfection? I think we're passing. This is our time. At this point, I think our best hope for winning is just burning them out. So I'm gonna do this. Put the maximum number. Join me if you want to live. Uh, 
of stuff in their deck. They have Doom Beast though. That's unfortunate. Um, probably supposed to keep this alive. It doesn't matter, right? It's a base. Yeah, it's already above. Leave your bags in the door. What it could be. Can you improve perfection? That's nice, but I don't. It might be a bit late. No place for the kind. System upgrade. Hey, take it to the gun show. So, we're gonna lose our board anyway from these things doing their thing. So, we may as well block as much damage as possible. And we're gonna play this Hexcore Foundry and hope that our opponent draws five damage worth of puff caps before they find any more healing within the next four draws. We also have plenty of burn we can draw into ourselves, so that's nice. They found more healing. Did not find really anything worth worth that. Uh, yeah. So it's unfortunate because like we were. We were buffing, like, so many of those Starlit Steer triggers went onto a Puff Cat Peddler that we just weren't drawing. And that's what can feel bad sometimes with, with this deck is, like, you want, yes, you want, like, probably, like, two or three Seer triggers on a unit, but then no more. Because then they start becoming overly bloated and then they just die to things like Vengeance or they get chump blocked. And especially with a Puff Cat Peddler, Puff Cat Peddler is a threat all on its own because it's putting poison mushrooms in their deck. We don't really need it to be big. I might actually want the Harsh Winds. Nah, I don't think you can keep a Harsh Winds in this deck. We might want the Thermo Beam, though. Yeah, if we had drawn that Puff Cat Peddler a lot earlier, and, and maybe those other uh, triggers could have gone on a different unit, we could have been putting more Puff Caps in their deck that whole time with the ignitions because they he failed our opponent failed to kill our uh, ballistic bot um very early on i think that's actually worth thermo beaming they could save it though with troll chant which would feel sort of bad eh, it spends our mana it's whatever it double harsh wins so now at least we can race against like Gangplank and Sedge, but we kind of need to like actually have stuff in play. I need more uh, there was a little fella asking for me. Yeah, we need to play this. For blood? And take the hit. Pass. Mm. This might be worth doing just so we can have spend some of our mana. We still have enough to aftershock something else that they might want to play on this turn. Do I want to aftershock that? I don't think so. Treasures of the ages for a price. I think I'd rather just bank the spell mana. I'm not greedy. 
My friends, though, have a mushroom. Have three. Fear beyond! Get on the floor! Captain's orders! Pull it to the floor! I'm a peddler, not a meddler! I guess we'll kill this. Okay, so we know the two cards they stole from our deck. One was the Seer, one was this Mystic Shot. An auspicious season. Timo would be an excellent draw for us. I think I actually make this vulnerable. Bow to no one. Run away, bite. Unexpected, but fine. I think that's okay. So they are gonna level Sedge, unfortunately. We're nowhere near leveling ours. They don't open attacks. I think we play the Starlet Seer. Um, just so we can get a little bit more value off of this Harsh Winds. I've always been a fun guy. Actually, perfectly fine. Think I'm still like a yodel in uniform. This deck feels really bad when we don't have Teemo. Oh, that's a harvest right there. I'm sure that's not exactly a hot take. This is, does nothing really. This is an interesting play from them because if I did have a Teemo in hand, kind of nasty. here which is kind of funny blessed by snow and stars I 
we can survive, but we're not gonna win that game. Uh, yeah, I think we'll end it there. I think I've had enough for today. <laughs> uh, we kind of had some poor draws those last couple of games, it felt like, but overall the deck seems like it's kind of solid when it gets... I mean, when it gets going, the deck is crazy. It's a really um, tough deck to beat when you have, like, Teemo's putting those mushrooms in your deck. You're just constantly getting damage. Then they ha then they find that leveled sedge, and you just... Good, good luck. Especially, you know, in the early game when you're trying to take out the key pieces to this kind of, like, pseudo... It, it really feels like a little bit of, like, a combo deck, right? And we have so much protection for our key uh, pieces to said combo that it can be frustrating on the opposing side of the table when you're trying to take them out and they're just constantly protecting your their stuff with Elixir of Irons or, or um, where is it, Troll Chant and stuff. Yeah, neat idea, neat archetype, very cool. Sedge is an awesome champion. Uh, you know, it's... Her, her leveled up doing her thing can feel so nasty on if you're if you're on the receiving end of it but getting to do uh getting to do her thing and run uh, run over your opponents much like much like she is in this image here can feel uh feel very fun but that's gonna do it for me today guys thanks a lot for everyone who stopped by um uh yeah i'll be back uh, for again for those who are new um I do upload all the videos from my past uh, streams on my YouTube channel. They'll be broken up by deck type, so you can watch exactly the uh, the matches that you're most interested in. The ones that we played today will be up sometime later today. Uh, thanks again to Faint HD for the raid. That was awesome. Uh, I hope everyone who stopped by had a good time. And yeah, we'll be back next Friday with some more Runeterra. Um, yeah, not much more to say about it than that. So yeah, thanks everyone. Have a good weekend and we'll see you next time.